The new Nissan Z Nismo is here and we have it on track. Can it take down the mighty Toyota Supra? Let's find out. So a couple years ago, Nissan dropped their all new Z. Honestly, it was an evolution of the our architecture from the 350Z, the 370Z, now in this new Z architecture with a lot of fantastic throwback looks to Zs of years past. Now the Nismo package does an even better job, in my opinion, of really paying homage to Nissan's heritage. It's one of my favorite things about this Nismo Z package actually, is it absolutely looks fantastic. In fact, of all the cars that we've tested recently, this one more than any other garnered a lot of attention from civilians, folks at gas stations, folks at grocery stores that just either knew it was something special or thought it was something just a little out of the ordinary and wanted to know more about it. Before we get into what an upgrade this Z Nismo is over the base Z, let's talk a little bit about the folks that make this and so many of our videos possible, and that is our friends at CRC Industries. If you've been consuming our content for any length of time, you know that CRC has been a longtime supporter of this show and all the stuff we do at Grassroots Motorsports. Anything around those brakes and hubs does a fantastic job at blasting off that grime, that brake dust, and making your brake area a fantastic place to work. Flashes off completely, leaves no residue. It's, it's brake clean, man. If I have to tell you, you're a step behind. So just go and get some. And that will be a big favor to us because you will be supporting the folks that support this channel. So we loved the look of the Z, but let's talk a little bit about what that Z Nismo adds to the base Z over that original package. Well, first off, you're getting additional horsepower, uh, 20 rated horsepower, 420 up from 400 and uh, 384 foot pounds of torque up from 350 in the base C. Now, these are rated numbers. The acceleration that we saw on track may not have matched what those rated numbers should have shown us, but we'll get into that when we talk about the V-Box data coming up a little bit. Aside from that, the Z Nismo is also getting specific springs, larger diameter and specifically tuned shock absorbers, and a set of sticky 200 treadwear rubber mounted on half inch wider raised wheels. Now, these wheels also come on the performance uh, trim Z, but they're a half inch narrower. The Nismo Z is, uh, let me make sure I get this right, 10 inches wide in the front and 10 inch and a half inches wide in the rear. So you're getting more tire, stickier tire on a larger wheel under a better suspension with more horsepower. You're also getting some specific tuning, both for these power uh, additions that the Nismo Z sees and for stuff like cooling and transmission control. So you're getting a fairly uh, comprehensive package of upgrades here. You're also paying a fairly comprehensive amount, um, over $13,000 of a bump from the base Z to the um, Z Nismo trim. Now the brake calipers are the same on the performance trim Z as they are on this Z Nismo trim, but you get an extra diameter of rotor in the front, 15 inch rotors in the front end. You get those same 13.8 inch rotors in the rear on both the performance and the Nismo trims of the Z. So let's talk about what it means for a manufacturer, especially a mass market manufacturer like Nissan to throw a set of 200 treadwear tires on a mass market performance car. Now, while these Dunlop Sport Maxes may not be quite in the league of a very track focused 200 treadwear tire like a Yokohama AO52 or a Bridgestone RE71 RS, they are still a very, very sticky 200 treadwear tire. And they make for a car that's in the most, uh, in most situations, very predictable, very easy to drive aggressively, and has a lot of grip, as we'll see on the data coming up. Inside the Z Nismo, a set of Recaro seats are really pretty good. They have a little bit too much lumbar support for me, but they have fairly excellent lateral grip, and they have a really nice, grippy, but comfortable, suede-like material that makes them a really good place to go about the business of driving. This Z probably has the best ergonomics of any of the modern Zs that I've driven in in quite a while. Certainly it's an upgrade 
from even the Performance Trim Z, and it's a huge upgrade in my opinion, from the 350Z and the 370Z. The Z Nismo is available with only one transmission. That is a nine-speed automatic with paddle shifters that for the most part does a pretty good job. At part throttle, the shifts are particularly aggressive. Uh, they react very, very well and very quickly to the paddles. And even at full throttle on track, the reaction time between the paddles and the shift, very consistent, very predictable, very easy to go about the business of driving with this system. There are a few shortcomings uh, in my opinion that we'll get into a little bit when we talk about the track analysis though. So let's cut to the chase because you are here for lap times. And I gotta tell you at, 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 at the risk of um, igniting the comment section, we were a little bit disappointed with the lap times that we were able uh, to produce with this Z Nismo. So the first data chart I wanna bring up for you on circuit tools here is the 420 horsepower Nissan Z Nismo, which weighs right at about 3,700 pounds versus uh, another turbocharged six cylinder car that weighs about 3,660 pounds. This is our project BMW 435i. Now we have dynoed our BMW 435i at 301 wheel horsepower. And it's also on a set of 200 treadwear tires, Bridgestone RE71, RS's. Um, it's the wheelbase and, and track are very, very similar to the Z. The BMW has 275 millimeter wide tires all the way around, whereas the Z Nismo has 255s in the front and 285s in the rear. So a very similar contact patch all the way around. And what I want you to look at in particular on this data chart are the acceleration curves. Now the Z is in blue the BMW is in red. We can see coming out of this first corner here that yes, the Z is showing a bit more power than the BMW. It's accelerating down the straightaway uh, until about 63 miles an hour. Both cars are even, then the Z starts to pull away and has about a four mile an hour advantage down to this next corner, which is turn four at the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park, our official test track. Um, through the next corner, the BMW actually has a lot of mid-corner speed on the Z. Some of that could be uh, due to just particular conditions on the day. Let's not pay too much attention to that right now. But let's go to this next straightaway. And we see that even when these cars pull even on their exit speeds here, both accelerate pretty identically down the next straightaway. That's kind of interesting that you've got a 420 horsepower car accelerating dead heads up with a 301 horsepower car. Um, and then we see that again in the next big acceleration zone. Yeah, I mean, maybe the Z has a tiny advantage here in, in some parts of this, of this acceleration showing, you know, maybe a mile an hour or, or two in, in, in spots, but these acceleration curves are nearly I identical. Um, get to the next acceleration zone and we can see, yeah, again, to about 50 miles an hour, they're even. The Z pulls maybe a little bit of a, of a slight acceleration, but that, folks, that's two, three miles an hour. That is not a 120 horsepower advantage. And then most curious in this last acceleration zone, going down the fastest straightaway on the, um, on, on the track, we see the Z just barely able to keep up with a BMW that has supposedly over a hundred fewer horsepower. So that Z Nismo ran a 120.47 second lap at the firm. Now that's about one and three quarter seconds off of our project BMW 435i, which ran a 118.8. But you're probably wondering, well, what did the Supra do? Well, the last Supra we tested ran a 118.35 second lap at the firm. And we have some of the legacy data from that test here. All right, Supra's in blue, Z is in red. And what we see here, um, especially in these acceleration zones, like right here, is we see a Supra with rated 387 horsepower out accelerating a Z Nismo with a 420 rated horsepower um, in darn near every acceleration zone coming out of 
turn four, going down to turn five. The Supra um, pulls harder up to about 96 miles an hour. A little faster through, through those corners there on going down the short acceleration zone down towards the S's. Again, Supra out accelerating the Z. Uh, heading down towards turn eight here. The Supra picking up a good four, five, six miles an hour in terminal speed over the Z and down the final acceleration zone coming out of turn eight. We see the entire way down that straightaway. The Supra is just gapping the Z. Even the momentary shift here, the Supra loses some, uh, some thrust due to the shift picks it right back up and starts out accelerating the Z down towards that next corner. So in every acceleration zone, we are seeing superior thrust by a supposedly less horsepower vehicle in the Supra. And we're just not seeing the kind of thrust from the Z that I think we should be seeing from a 420 horsepower car. Now, what we are kind of seeing is we are seeing some nice cornering numbers. So the overall speed trace of the Z looks pretty good. We've got some nice sharp peaks on these, these deceleration traces. Uh, maybe on this particular one here, we've got a little bit of, of ABS intervention right at the top. But overall, you know, we, we look at like uh, this brake initiation right here, nice and sharp, just as sharp as, as the Supra. Nice reactive um, brakes from the, the Z Nismo does actually come with a specific set of brake pads spec'd just for this trim of Z. And they appear to be doing fine work. Good numbers through the corners, uh, especially through these sustained corners, like here in turn eight, just as fast as the Supra through the corners, which again, the Z has, has fantastic road holding, great reaction, and just an overall fun car to drive on track just seems to be missing some power that they claim it has. So what's our conclusion here? What, what, can, what, what have we learned about this Z Nismo? Well, let me make a couple of suppositions here. First, I, I really, it's an enjoyable car to drive, but it's also kind of a, what I'd call like a half throttle hero. The car almost feels a little more aggressive at part throttle than it does at full throttle. At part throttle, it really bangs those shifts hard. It really gives you an aggressive acceleration and quick boost at part throttle. Uh, really, really just, just sort of sort of snappy, great, great response. But when you're operating at 50% on, on the throttle, shifting below red line, it just feels more aggressive than it is when you finally put your foot all the way to the floor and shift at red line. There's not a uh, sort of proportional amount of additional capacity the way you would expect. So I think that to some extent, the car is sort of backing off to preserve itself. Those shifts that are incredibly crisp, incredibly snappy at sub redline RPMs get a little bit lazier at redline. I think there's some, some torque mitigation um, at work there to just not put the, the sort of sort of lash through the drive line that um, a, a, an engine at full full boost is producing. And I think that's ultimately hurting the performance of the car a little bit. So does that mean this is a disappointment? Well, not really. It's still a great car. If, if, if this car showed up and Nissan said, hey, try out our uh, $55,000 360 horsepower sports car, I'd be like, yeah, this thing is awesome, man. This is a great $55,000, 360 horsepower sports car. It's not though. Nissan says it's a 420 horsepower, $65,750 sports car. And as such, I feel like it has a little bit higher bar to clear, which as the numbers show, it's just not quite clearing yet. All the ingredients are there. It's brilliantly put together. It's a great package. It just needs to have the performance that Nissan claims it has available to the driver all the time. And then I think you will have a car capable of taking down the Supra. The ingredients are there. Nissan just needs to finish the meal on this one. Hey folks, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you enjoy all of the content we are producing here on YouTube and on the web and in print. You can check us out 
on the web at grassrootsmotorsports.com. You'll have access to all of the material from the print publication as well. And you can go right down below this video. You don't even have to smash that like button. You can gently nudge the like button and the effect is the same. You will throw a like on this video and also subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. You'll get first cracked at all of the content we produce. We appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you next time at the track. that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more. Want to see more content like this? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And for more information, visit us online at grassrootsmotorsports.com.